Hey y'all. I'm back for a spell. I'm not doing anything really. So um I'm enjoying my last couple days in Wisconsin. Don't mind my eyes. Y'all know I've been crying and stuff, but it's okay. God is good. I just took a walk. It was really, really nice. Um so well, yeah. I was walking by faith because it was dark outside and I don't know where I'm at, so I got I made it. <laughs> But, um, what's interesting to me lately is, um, what I feel like is a lack of faith. Um, I think about my own story and how I really did not know anything about God or Christ before, um, coming to an understanding of who he was through the Holy Spirit. So, um... My family didn't go to church. I wasn't like I've been to church, obviously. Um, we went on Easter, we went on Christmas, <laughs> we went on all your your holidays. Um, I can only imagine, I can only think now when I was younger, I used to go to uh, I went to like vacation Bible study like once when I was like 11 because my friends went or something. So, very, very, very limited understanding of the Bible of God through my upbringing. But there was something that was always like in me that need, that knew I needed to like pray, you know, or I, 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 I remember being asked who was, who was Jesus. And I, I was really little and I said, that's God's son. Like I already knew or something. Anyhow, um, all that I know is coming, comes from the Holy Spirit. It's not because I was taught by any one person. It's, it's a compilation of what God has given me in my spirit and what I've, uh, what's resonated in my spirit and I've known to be true before ever actually opened in a Bible, you know um, When I actually came into understanding the Bible, it was more of oh my gosh You showed me this already like it's like I already knew it, you know, cuz he says that this is a remembrance and I tell people The Bible should be used as a reference of remembrance because if it's already in your heart You already know it you say he says that uh, the words of his people are written on their hearts and so therefore, it's already in us, whoever God has chosen, whoever he has called from the beginning, you are a walking Bible. It's already in there. You know the words of Christ. So when you read that Bible, it should resonate with your spirit as a confirmation, as opposed to an affirmation. I always say that the Bible is not an affirmation. It's not sent here to affirm you. It's sent here to confirm you. It confirms that you are a child of God because the things that it expresses, you will it will resonate with your spirit. You will already know in your heart if you, in fact... Are truly chosen by God it's a it's a it's a confirmation of who you are in him so it's it, it shows you by and God has shown me by character those who don't really know him even though they profess his name and I'm starting to really understand this because if I had known him by book before I knew him by spirit then I would be preaching a word or speaking a word that was already told to me in in the flesh as opposed to I only speak what I hear and then I read it where every others usually read it and then they speak so the Bible sit here to confirm who we are as God's children not affirm that we are God's children we, we don't need affirmation in Christ he's the only thing that's affirmative we are the confirmation that he has walked through the works and the things that we do so when I read and I listen to people sometimes and this is not to you know this is not to put anybody down but I, I I just got taught this level of discernment because there's so many people that'll come on Facebook I was a victim at one I'm not gonna call myself a victim but this is how God had to show me he showed me in one season to receive everybody you know he says that as for me he said um we're taught that it's better to give than to receive but sometimes the reason why we can't receive is because we uh, we are, we're not, we've learned how to give, but we don't know how to receive. He told me in one season, receive everything, receive everybody. And it was the instant that he started to boost up my followers. Well, one day I had 212 followers and I knew all of them. I never accepted anybody that I did not know ever. Everybody that I knew on my Facebook friends list was my friend in real life or my family. So one day I'm in a kitchen and I just see something that says Samuel and I heard somebody sp and then I go to my Instagram and the first thing I see here is someone say God made Samuel an instant celebrity basically because all he ever asked him for was wisdom and understanding so I say to God hey that's funny because I've never heard the same story of Samuel and this was just last year 
I said, all I ask you is for wisdom and understanding what you're about to make me an instant celebrity. Well, the next day I did a live and I had 12 people watching me at once. To me, that was instant celebrity because, <laughs> let's listen, because I usually only have one or two people watching me at a time, like right now. But then all of a sudden I'm sitting there and it goes to six and then it goes to 12 and I'm like, oh my gosh, he was right. But then it goes to 200, to 500, to 3,000, to 4,000. And it was instant. And the next day I had no less than 5,000 friends all the time and my inbox is always full. And it's just ridiculous. It's crazy. This is what you wanted? No, this isn't what I wanted because now I never get a chance off my phone. My phone's always ringing and it's going off. I'm like, who are all these people? God tells me, receive everybody. It's a lesson in discernment. I'm going to change the name of this. I said, receive everybody. Yeah, just accept everybody's request because this is why God told me to receive everybody. Because when you're somebody like me who doesn't really always understand that there is an evil, you always want to look for the good in everybody. You won't recognize evil because you're always focused on the good. You won't recognize the bad. So God told me to receive everybody. And when I received everybody, I saw so many different types of people. I literally had men that would send me their penis pictures. I would um, see women that were interested in only, you know, selling whatever ideas they had. I saw people and I'm thinking everybody that wants to be your friend is for God. Everybody who sees my page, they must like me because they like Jesus. And it's funny because I get a lot of people who be like, well, I hope you know that people don't, uh, that men that watch you, they're just watching you because you're beautiful. I mean, that might be true, but who cares? I'm talking about Christ. I don't care what they're doing. So God showed me that already. Not everybody that you received, Ebony, is for me. You have to learn how to determine if they're for me or they're for themselves or if they're... I had to learn a level of discernment that I had not known. So where a lot of people in Christ will tell us, stay away from all these people, God told me, receive everybody so that you know what I look like and what I don't look like even when they profess my name. What I found is that a lot of people say God, but they don't know Jesus. A lot of people, and because he showed me that starting with us as regular people, it got more deeper when he started to show me to do that even in the ministry of the body of Christ. Receive everybody. Do not turn your back on anybody because technically that's how they miss Jesus. They turn their back on what they didn't understand. But if you were to receive everybody, you can learn how to turn away from what's not of him when it doesn't display the character of Christ but speaks the word of Christ, it cannot be Christ. Everybody who speaks the word doesn't know Christ. Everybody who speaks this word doesn't know how to love like Jesus. The devil knows the Bible. So if I am, it, it, there's no coincidence that the devil recites scripture. It's because a lot, not everybody who runs a church is doing it for the right reasons. It's not always for God. It could be for this world. So when Jesus was in the, 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 the place of temptation where he had to go against the devil, the devil quoted scripture and Jesus quoted what was written on his heart that was not written in the book. And so I find that I, 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 I easily receive everybody, right? And this is what God told me to do. And what I find is that when I give a word to someone that they don't readily understand, they reject me because they don't think it's in the book. But everything I say is in the book. It was already written. And a lot of things that I speak are, are from Revelation. And a lot of people don't know Revelation or have Revelation knowledge to understand that part of the book. And so it's easy to show you how I come to certain conclusions. It's easy. But what I found that in, in the body of Christ, we don't know how to communicate with one another. We're so much more prone to rejecting one another and telling one another what we shouldn't be doing and how God's going to cut you off and do all these things when that's not God's character at all. And when I say these things and people, I've been accused of being a witch. I've been accused of being uh, 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 preaching the doctrine of devils and I've been accused of all types of stuff. The thing is, is that uh, when God starts to elevate you to new places in the spirit, you attract different places in the spirit. So now... 
where I used to only hear about people that worshiped other gods and witches and warlocks. I'm really targeted by these people. It's so weird. Like I have witches that'll follow me. I had somebody request me the other day that was worship the devil. I'm like, why do you even want to be my friend? <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me because I'm just a regular person who has blessed with a relationship with God that knows that we can all have this relationship with God. I'm not special. I'm not anybody different than anybody else. It's just that we've been taught so much to fear what we what what we're told loves us that we don't know the difference between love and fear. It's like we're almost in an abusive relationship. We're being told one thing and we're really walking in this thing scared. Like, oh my God, if I do that, if I touch that, if I eat that, if I if I go here, if I act this way, oh my God, I'm going to hell. We're walking in fear towards something that says, do not love and don't walk in fear. And so God has just given me this amazing relationship with him where we walk in faith. Because what we don't understand, we don't have to worry about. Because grace and mercy covers us. And when it says that we die for lack of knowledge, it doesn't mean that we die because of what we don't know. It means that because of the lack of the knowledge of other people understanding to receive everybody and know and under learn people before rejecting them, because that's the lesson they should have learned from Christ. They killed Christ for their lack of knowledge of who he was. People that did not know Christ had the lack of knowledge, not the people with God. The Bible is geared to teach us love. It's not geared to teach us death. If God is life and love, why are we so scared that sin and death is going to take us out? He's already told us that he loves us. He also said to my people who are chosen or who are called by my name. That means he didn't say, like he said, all things work together. He didn't say all people. He said my people. So one of the levels of discernment that I learned is that if they reject you and you know that you walk by faith and you love God and he's given this to you, you don't have to worry about it because maybe they're not his people. I learned to receive everybody so that I could learn the difference between people that knew God and people that spoke the word of God that really didn't know him at all. Because if they knew him, the only way they truly know him is that they knew Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ didn't come to condemn us. And he didn't come to throw stones at us when everybody else did. And he didn't take the woman in adultery and say, uh, I'm sorry, you, you're rejected. He brought her closer and said, if I don't judge you, neither did they. And if I don't condemn you, then I don't. I, it's be, and if you know me, you know my father. So if you know Jesus, you know that God is not up there about to send his people nowhere <laughs> and I and it's just it's unfortunate because it's like it's not anything to do with sin being condoned it's not but sin is is was is understood because Christ understood us as flesh therefore he died so that he could show us that sin was the thing he the Bible says he died as sin he who knew no sin became sin so y'all looking at Jesus on the cross. God is looking at sin on the cross and his own son died. God has compassion towards his son now. We are his son now when he walks with us. He can't kill us. We already died for our sin through Christ. So Jesus lives and he understands the sin that's in us. But Jesus proved that even dying as sin did not keep him from the promise of God. He's saying, in this time, understand that everything has a season. Everything has a time. Everything has a reason for being done. And when I created the world, there was no sin. So there was no laws. Laws didn't come in until Moses, which isn't until the second book of the Bible. Do you know how many people are in the Bible before Moses that didn't have a law of sin? Because they walked by faith. And Christ came up to give us the ability to do the same, to be covered in our sin through grace and mercy as we learned who we were in him. Because it's not logical that you're going to meet someone that you barely know, barely understand, don't have a connection or a relationship with. But people have told you about this, so you're just supposed to believe it? No, that's not how it worked with me. Guy, this has been a real relationship. And I've fallen many times 
and he never left me. And he still uses me and I'm still sinful. And I have a nature in me that is called a sinful nature and Paul had it too. And Paul said that even though the sin lives in me, thank God for Jesus Christ who died for my sin because that is not going to stop God from using my life to be effective in this world. Our sin lets us know that we need God. And without him, we would never be able to move forward in a world riddled with sin without the light of Christ. So not everybody has this though. It's not for everybody. It's for his people that understand that and have compassion and love for one another. And we're not telling each other that if you do this, you're going to die. Because for a season that worked because it let them know that they were being separated from their oppressor. Remember, it says that the law is given for lawbreakers. His people were never under the law. They were always under his grace and love and the authority of the beginning. Same word he gave Daniel. David. Daniel. No. David, who killed Goliath. And the law says, thou shalt not kill. He walked in faith. Abraham, who lied and allowed his wife to sleep with other men because he didn't want to get caught after meeting God. Still got his promise. His descendants number the earth. Walk by faith. Sin. Noah. Drunkard. Walked by faith. Built the ark. Saved a whole generation. David. Put his best friend on the front line. Got him killed just to sleep with his wife. A king. And Jesus' bloodline. The sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That's an unforgivable sin. Unforgivable sin being blasphemy of the Holy Spirit means denying the power of God after it's been given to you. Blaspheming the Holy Spirit is saying that the Spirit has less power than the world. And when you give sin and death more power than what Christ did for us and the grace and mercy of God, you have now blasphemed the power of the spirit and you're not allowing yourself to move forward in faith because you're stuck in fear and fear and faith cannot move together. It's okay to be who you are in Christ. God knew you when he chose you. Guess what? He approved of you and he knew the world wouldn't. They did it to his son. So he gave us Jesus Christ as our covering to say, touch not mine. Don't put your hands on those because those are justified by me and who I've chosen, I have justified. All things will work together for those who chose the Lord and are called according to his purpose. He doesn't leave you, forsake you, condemn you, or judge you. He allows you to become who he has called you to be under the grace and mercy that he's given you through Christ while you are walking perfect in his sight, becoming holy with every step. And that's what you can trust and believe. And if you don't understand it, it's okay. I just ask that you receive it and you ask God before you reject it because it's something you don't know. And that's what we should do. Receive everything, reject nothing, and learn to discern the spirit of God. And I pray you receive this in Jesus' name. Amen.